Hello and welcome back to the Next Gen Racing YouTube channel. Yes, it's been a while and we do apologise that we weren't with you last week. Jack and I have been absolutely hectic, but it was an excellent weekend on Coral Eclipse weekend nevertheless. Jack, you've been there in Newmarket. We've seen pictures and images on, on Twitter this week of you with Dubawi and Stradivarius. It's been absolutely superb for you. How are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's been some week. It's been... An unbelievable two weeks kind of in, around the industry managed to get to Chiefly Park last night as well for their stadium parade Ulysses looking in great um, great form as well especially um, Mason my word he's 15 but it looks like he's just off the track yesterday so no look I mean it's an unbelievable two weeks we're going to the July course as well Thursday Friday hopefully see a few familiar faces do feel free to come and say hello as well and hopefully give me a winner because it looks like a tough three days can't wait to get into it and that's why we're here today. We're previewing the three days at Newmark on the July course. Excellent to have racing back on the July course. It's been a, a few weeks we've had it already, but this is the big festival. This is the big one. It's three excellent days of racing. Last weekend, obviously, the Coral Eclipse, we did miss it. I was a big fan of Paddington, and Paddington went and won in good style. Jack, just a quick word on the Coral Eclipse. What did we make of it? Yeah, no, look... Yeah, Paddington was very impressive, wasn't he? Emily Upjohn, I thought, ran a race. Be interested to see Paddington back to a mile. He's got this funny old head carriage, which he seems to have every time he runs. But look, he's clearly a, a top-class three-year-old. I can't imagine they'll be running him as a four-year-old. I can imagine they'll probably be sending him to stud at the end of this year. Uh, I imagine he'll probably have one run after the Sussex. Maybe maybe the Judd one, and that will do him. Yeah, he's now two to one on for the Sussex after they confirm that he'll be heading there and he's going to be very tough to beat. Um, no matter who they send, they even if it's in Spiral went there, it's another older filly of John Gosden's that is going to find it very tough to get past Paddington on the day. So looking forward to Goodwood, our preview of that will be coming very soon. Let's get into our July meeting preview then. We've got three races to preview on the Thursday, two on the Friday and three on the Saturday, which include the Bunbury Cup, a tough handicap to get stuck into, and also the feature, which is the July Cup. So on Thursday, we start off with the 150, which is the one mile five fell on Bahrain Trophy Stakes, a group free contest for the three-year-olds, and Tower of uh, London is the 9 to 4 favourite. Saint George is the 5 to 2 second favourite. Castleway 7 to 2. Klondike is 9 to 1. Land Legend is 16 to 1. And Think First is 66 to 1. Um, I actually tweeted about Tower of London on his uh, second start of the season, Jack, saying that this could be a future cup horse of Aidan O'Brien. It really does look that way. Um, and I'm very impressed by this horse. I think he's going to be actually quite tough to beat in this. I know Saint George has got the or St. George, however you want to say it, but um, it's got the form of Gregory from Royal Ascot, and Gregory could end up to be quite a, a, a smart horse and has actually got an entry in the Goodwood Cup, which would be fascinating to see whether he took that up as a three-year-old. But, yeah, I was quite impressed by the win at Leopardstown of, of Tower of London, then went on and won at Down Royal in, in, in good style as well, at a fair price as well, 5-2 to two that day. I thought he'd go off a lot shorter, but I have a feeling he'll develop into a real nice staying type. It wouldn't surprise me if we see kind of what Aidan O'Brien can do at the end of the season and send this horse to you know Champions Day and potentially go for the stayers race there. We have seen it with some of his three-year-olds and then develop them into a, a really smart stayer into the following season. So I think Tower of London, I think 9-4. to four. I know we're kick, I'm kicking off with a favourite, but I think he'd be very tough to beat. What about yourself, Jack? Yeah, no, I think it's a fascinating little race. Um, that's for sure. Tower of London, of course, like he's a full brother to Capri, Irish Derby winner, St. Ledger winner. He's also uh, brother to Cypress Creek, I think it is. He won over a mile and five and two miles. And then Passion, he won a group three over a mile and six. So look, but for me, I think I could probably just let him win at that price. Um, he beat him at him, 83 rated Ibrahimovic. He did it in very good style, don't get me wrong. But look, he's nine to four. You've got the Aiden O'Brien factor in there as well. And I think he got two or three decent contenders in behind uh, San George. We're not in, we're not in France anymore, Sam, but I like it. It's a little bit more fruity than St. George, but no, I'm San George. I'm going to call him San George just for you. Although of course it is St. George. No, look, he ran a great race in the Queens Vars. I mean, by roaring line out of Galileo, Galileo Mare who placed over a mile and five. So we could stay out this trip when winning on his penultimate outing over it as well. He travelled beautifully on the inside rail, didn't he? He was penned in for a split second, got the gap. It looked like he was coming with a winning, winning run at um, uh, one point as well, but Gregory kind of outstayed him for sure. But it just kind of looked like St. George didn't really want to battle that day. He was almost eased in the last 50, 100 yards. Um, I think on paper, of course, he's done a lot more than Tower of London. But um, with Tower of London's pedigree, I'm, I'm assuming that's exactly why he is that price. But look, St. George, I think he's probably the pick for me at the top of the market. But I'm probably going to stick my neck out for uh, Klondike. I know there's only two places each way. I'll probably have a little win back on Klondike at 9-1. to one. 
and a half brother to the Queen's Vars winner, Kamari. I think you'll just appreciate the step up and trip. He was second to a very inexperienced looking cocked hat winner in Gregory at uh, Goodwood last time out. He just got the better of Banderas on debut, but it looked like he started to get the hang of things late on in the cocked hat. And of course, we saw. Um, William Haggis come and do this with Al Arsi as well, who came in to win here. It's interesting that they're putting a first-time tongue tie on Klondike. I mean, I haven't actually been able to get the up-to-date stats, but I knew of, as of June last year that William Haggis operated at a 31% strike rate with first-time tongue ties. So it'd be interesting to see that angle there as well. But look, Klondike, I think he costs 600 grand. So for me at 9-1, to one, it wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if he takes a step forward whatsoever. So Klondike will be the one for me in the Bahrain Trophy. Okay, Klondike nine to one, a fair price, and uh, yeah, it would be a, a decent win bet in a race like this if only the two places available. And look, we can call him Saint George, Saint George, whatever we want to call him. But I feel like that name, that name might stick for the rest of the season now with me, and we might, I might get taken the mick out for that. But it might just be that I'm looking forward to a couple of uh, French horses coming over here towards the back end of the season. We'll be discussing them in a few weeks' time. Let's move on to the first two-year-old race then that we're going to be covering, which is the Kingdom of Bahrain July Stakes. This is a six furlong contest for the two-year-old Colts and Geldings. And uh, Paraskin, oh God, this is that's a horrible name for me this week. This is not uh, one that actually, I want. I, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna stop you. I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Pura Songwe. Pura Songwe. See, I'm usually quite good with pronouncing I don't usually have to come no, to you there, yeah. but Pura, Pura Songwe. I mean, the thing is, I'm not wearing my glasses. I haven't got my racing post um, website zoomed in. But yeah, like 11 to 4, Pura Songwe for the bowling team is the 11 to 4 favourite. Malk is 7 to 2. Mountain Bear is 6 to 1. Chief Mankato is 15 to 2. Lake Forest is 8 to 1. And then we're looking at double figures about the other four in here. Um, this is really, really tough, Jack. Really tough. Like to stick your neck out of one of these two year olds on the July course, six furlongs, a mixture of Aidan O'Brien horses coming here, Balding, Fahi, Charlie Hills, William Haggis. This is not easy, but have you managed to land on one? No, not at all. I thought Pura, Pura Songway, um or Pura, Pura Sang, as you wanted to call him. No, um, I thought I thought he was pretty impressive at Hay Dog. Look, it's just one of those races that you want to stay away from, don't you? Malk was second, of course, in the Norfolk when Valiant Force went and won. You got Mountain Bear in there, of course. Very no Brian Chief Man can, uh, Mankato had to be withdrawn from the Coventry. You can go even lower there, but look for me. This is one you definitely need to know. I thought poor Pura Songwe was pretty impressive on debut. He'd be the one that I'm sticking my neck out for, but we'll move swiftly on because I think it's a very tough looking race. Yeah, I'm completely in the same camp as you in terms of fact I want to move on quite quickly from this race. But I'll probably just take a chance on Malk, who, who was that, like you mentioned, a, a good second behind Valiant Force. I know it's 150 to one shot. How good's that form? It's questionable. But, you know, we were all debating before that race at elite status in American Rascal. Like, it looked a really strong race on paper before that. And I think we could find out, find out it could be actually a very strong race altogether. Um, I mean, His Majesty was in there as well, who's, who's a really top class horse. So I'll take a chance on Malk, I think 7 to 2. That would be the way I'd play if I was there on the day, but it wouldn't be a big bet at all. Let's move on to the final race, then, what we're going to be previewing on the Thursday, which is the 335 from Newmarket. It's the mile and a half Princess of Wales' stakes. This is a Group 2 contest, and Adair. Tops the market at fifteen to eight on Israel seven to two Global Storm nine to one and Global Alliance the outside of the fort fourteen to one eight fifteen about Adar third in the Prince of Wales stakes Jack looking to go two better in the Princess of Wales stakes should he be doing it Yeah yeah he should be doing it shouldn't he um, Be interested to see how much rain they get I think he ran a decent race in the Prince of Wales over what was probably a slightly sharp enough trip, probably an inadequate trip for him on that ground. I always thought it probably should have run him over a mile and a half instead when the ground was relatively quick. These older four-year-olds, five-year-olds that Charlie Appleby has at the moment, it's interesting to see them stay in training because at the moment they're not really picking up these big pots, are they? Israel, of course, was disappointing behind Quickthorn last time out. The likes of uh, Global Storm, of course, is in there and Grand Alliance, who won on debut. And if the rain comes, I think Grand Alliance has got to be one you've got to kind of take either, either without the favourite or actually as a win bet. But look, Adair is one of those races that I'm probably going to leave alone again. Sorry, not exactly too much inside there. Adair should really be going to win. But I wouldn't be surprised if the rain comes that Grand Alliance is there in second. 
Yeah, that's kind of the way I looked at it. I, I mean, I think Adeo's just going to win this, to be totally honest. I'm not sure about his Rav. Just doesn't seem to like to look to get his head in front. As a, when he when he comes, he just doesn't quite get there. And I'm I'm not sure whether I can trust a horse like that. And I know he sh he's kind of the, the likely one to challenge Adeo, but I just don't see him beating him. I'd agree with Jack that Grand Alliance would be the fascinating one if, if the conditions came right for, for Grand Alliance and the forerunner field, look, we can see plenty of shocks in these forerunner fields and yeah, I think that could be the, the way to play maybe without the favourite, you might better get a good price on that as well, so worth having a look at that market. Let's move on to the Friday then. Um, the 225 there is the six furlong Dutch of Cambridge stakes. Group two contest for the two year old Phillies. And Star of Mysteries, the six to five favourite. Sopranos, five to two. Persian Dreamer, eight to one. Dazzling Star is ten to one. Got to Love a Grey, ten to one. Pretty Crystal, ten to one. Fourteen to one. Bar. My probably short price bet of the meeting goes here. I think Star of Mystery is uh, probably one the. The, the big kind of bankers of the meeting to be totally honest I was really impressed by the way that this horse ran against Carla's way who didn't quite perform in the Albany stakes but I, I, I thought he ran a really decent uh, she ran a really decent race and then came out of Haydock and absolutely blew away the field which gave my case for Carla's way for the Albany and I said that the horse that finished second absolutely hosed up and this horse did absolutely hose up and put in a really decent display but the race you've got to look at is the the race on the 1st of July which was actually on this course and one by four lengths in really good style. We know how well good Olfin and, and Charlie Appleby and Buick get on at this course. And I think the the kind of turn in form is about to happen. And I think they could have a really good meeting. We've already mentioned a day are just a moment ago. But I think this could be good Olfin's kind of big turn in form this week. I think we could see kind of, you know, William Buick and Charlie Appleby having doubles and trebles some of these days. But I don't think six to five is the worst price in the world. I think he's very, very good. I know Soprano looked very good at Newmarket on debut and, Ran a decent third um, against Port Fortuna in the Albany. But, yeah, I'm going to take Star of Mystery. And I've all mentioned Dazzling Star. I would not rule out the secretary. I don't know where this horse is going to go. But um, I think Dazzling Star, the, the run at Newmarket on the July course again last time, the win there was very impressive. And I have got a bit of form tied in with one of my selections towards the back end of the show. So I have to give that horse a mention as well. But Star of Mystery, Jack, I think could be one of the bankers of the meeting. But I imagine you're going to try and take her on. Yeah, I think you have to, don't you? That, that's not really, that's not really me. Yeah, da, um, Dazzling Star is pretty um, interesting. I think that was a race that Zane Claudette won a couple of years ago, the, the one that she won at Newmarket. It's totally a mystery. Yeah, very impressive, six to five in this kind of race, a juvenile race like this. Just really isn't me. I thought Soprano was off the bridle pretty early last time out at Ascot in the Albany, but I thought she actually stayed on pretty well. And look, the, the form of her. Uh, debut win is still quite strong midnight affair is by no means a bad filly whatsoever of course the third has come out and won since dramatized one of the contest last year i'm assuming they thought they were going to do the same with midnight affair but look soprano came from the center of the trap was off the bridle quite early but stayed on quite well you got persian dreamer who was down the near side with pretty crystal pretty crystal stayed on pretty well was actually traveling probably the strongest of the three um a furlong and a half out kind of had to switch right um, past Persian Dreamer, but again, stayed on a good style. It's a pretty trappy contest. It's it's pretty much style of mystery versus the Albany, and we'll probably find out the winner in due course. But I think, of course, William Buick on style of mystery and Soprano being jocked up. Uh, sorry, Ryan Moore being jocked up on Soprano is by no means any any bad thing whatsoever. Of course, he probably doesn't know the filly as well, but that's no problem for me. And over double the price of style of mystery, I'll be with Soprano. Okay, Soprano for Jack and myself with Star of Mystery. It's going to be a fascinating little contest, but I think we could see a, a fairly strong filly come out of that race. I'd be surprised if we don't. Um, feature on day two is the 3.35 on Friday, the one mile Tattersall's Falmouth Stakes, Group 1 contest for the fillies and mares. And top of the market, got Via Sestina at 2-1. to one. Nashua is 130 Remar Key is 4 to 1, Copice is 7 to 1, Prosperous Voyage 8 to 1, 10 to 1 about Random Harvest, and 16 to 1 bar these. Jack, we've got two fillies at the top of the market here um, who are both coming back in trip um, after probably saying that their best distance is a mile and a quarter, but dropping back to the mile here. It's a fascinating one, but I'm not sure Nashua should be as short as she is, or are you going to say that I'm wrong there? No, not at all. Completely agree with you. If there's any rain, I think Via Sistina is going to take all the beating here. She absolutely hacked up beating Alhazen 
uh, at Newmarket. And last time out at the Pretty Poly, she's young a little bit, but look, she showed an unbelievable turn of foot to get the better of some some decent fillies that day. We've got Stay Alert back in, uh, in second. Of course, the like of Ross Carberry, I'm a big fan of, was back there as well. And Jamie Spencer, I mean, silky hands, Jamie Spencer. I just get a perfect tune out of her. She, as I said, she hung, she hung ever so slightly. I think she'll probably actually have enough toe. I wasn't too sure she would have enough toe, but I've watched... I watched it back this morning. She does look like she has the turn of foot to be able to to, to land this big pot over a mile. Of course, she got Nasher in there. Oh, yeah, you can't really trust Nash Nasher these days, can you? Uh, Remarkey, of course, being bought by Al Wathnam Racing, the new the new big force in racing. Who was second to here last time out? Gets a lot of weight as a three year old. If there wasn't as much rain, I'd be siding with Remarkey over Via Sestina. But I'm hoping there is going to be some rain, and if there is, I think Via Sestina is definitely the one to beat. Okay, interesting. I mean, are you saying that Remar Key, you'd rather see this horse run on quicker going, or would you? Because I mean, this horse won in good style at Newbury on on soft ground. But what do you I make suppose, of that? I suppose it's more the fact that I'd rather not see Via Sestina on quicker ground rather than I'd see. Mm-hmm. I'd rather see Remar Key on quicker ground. If you know yeah, I mean. it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's not a race that I've kind of wanted to get too stuck into. It's uh, going to be a fascinating race, but. I've just looked at it and thought Remar Key might be at a price, maybe the bet. I think Via Sestina, if, if the rain did come, that price is going to shorten. She could even go off even money, to be totally honest, if it came up really soft. And I don't know what rain we're scheduled to get. Jack, you're in Newmarket at the moment. What are the weather? What's the weather conditions there? I'll tell you what, it's a fantastic day looking out there in front of me as we speak. But there's a lot of rain scheduled for today. So I think today and Wednesday will be the big day where we decide kind of what the ground's going to be like on the first day. I think there's a touch of rain scheduled, uh, forecast as well on the Friday. So it'll be interesting to see how much we get. I think even on good ground, I think Via Sestina will probably be too uh, too good. I don't think we'll be seeing anything softer than good ground. I'll be pretty surprised if that's the case. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it is going to be fascinating. I mean, I might take a chance on Remarque on the day, I think, 4-1. to one, Maybe a fair price. Via Sestina, though, Jack, just to get another quick one. Obviously, the plan could be still to go to the Nassau Stakes. She could take on the mighty Blue Rose Sen. A bit of an early, I know we're not previewing the rate, the meeting for another few weeks, but a bit of an early one. If the ground were to come up good at Goodwood and these two were to meet, she'd get the Phillies allowance Blue Rose Sen. Would you side with Blue Rose Sen or do you think Via Sestina's soft ground is key to her over that trip? I'll probably be a soul sister. Oh, God. I'll throw that one out there. Yeah, probably. It depends, of course. Look, in, look in August at Goodwood, you got to be you got to be pretty lucky to have any soft in the in the description whatsoever. But um, it it would obviously comp- depend completely what she does here. She goes and wins over a mile on good ground, and goodness me, the world's via Sistine as an oyster. I think she's she's. I don't know if she's better than Blue Rose Sen, especially with the the three year old allowance. But I think Soul Sister's probably the pick of the bunch. That was, like the, that, 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 that was like the that was like the clip from Sky Sports when Sol Campbell he answered the question said who do you think will win out of uh, France and Brazil and uh, he says something like oh I think the Netherlands like yeah, well, <laughs> you can't be a loser can you it's like saying who's going to win out of the two losers neither of them are going to win but no uh, to be fair even if I didn't think that I think I'd definitely just say it just because I know how much you love Bruno Sen and how much it winds you up it's fantastic. Oh, uh, yeah, get ready, because, uh, yeah, the Blue Rose Sen propaganda is really going to begin in I'm the next on, couple of weeks. I'm not on for the NASA stakes preview. I'm away. I'm watching No, no, no. You'll, you'll, you'll be there, and there'll be French flags all over our set, because <laughs> we'll, be, we'll definitely be filming that and mine, I'm sure. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Remember, do catch that. It's one of our favourite previews of the year. We have so much fun during that preview. That'll be in a few weeks' time. Really looking forward to Jack to come around and enjoy that preview with myself. Let's move on to Saturday then. The 325 is where we start on the Saturday uh, with the seven furlong. Bet 365 Superlative Stakes Group 2 contest for the two year olds. And City of Troy is the six to four favourite. Great Truth is five to two. Mountain Bear six to one. Hartem, who Jack was a big fan of at Royal Ascot. We'll see if he's a big fan of this horse again soon. Seven to one. Uh, Iberians eight to one. And double figures. The rest of them. Jack, we knew you were a big fan of Hartem ever since the run at Goodwood. Um, have you given up following this horse, or do you think he could run his race here? No, given up. Um, right, okay. Given up. I think there's probably something a little bit less exposed that's going to come and win this. Is it going to be City of Troy? Look, I thought he was actually pretty impressive at the car, wasn't he, on debut? I mean, you can't really ask for more than you showed getting the better of Gallon, who I actually don't think is a bad colt in his own right. Um 
you know, on paper anyway, I was actually I actually thought Gavin could have pushed him a little bit further to the line, but I thought City of Troy did it well. Great truth, of course, is in there as well after absolutely hacking up at Leicester. That was a great performance. Um, interesting that, of course, they sent him to Leicester in the first place and then send him here. But um, actually, one of the prize uh, is Sun. He ran over five furlongs on soft ground at Ascot, was staying on that day. Clearly too sharp, that trip, for sure. And then one under pretty cosy ride from Pat Dobbs last time out in Newbury uh, in early June, beating Soldiers Gold, who's since come out and won. It doesn't look like the strongest race, but he did it. He also, um, on the same card, Brazilian, um ran as well. I think he could be top class for the hand stable as well. But I thought Sun did it in pre Pretty decent style. It looked pretty cosy. Of course, they won it last year with Isaac Shelby, so he could have more to offer. And if he does, I'd say a double-figure price, about 10, 12 to 1, is probably on the on the fair side. Yeah, I've literally, my notes here, so I've got Great Truth down as the most likely winner. I'd be quite excited by Great Truth. And I've already mentioned that Charlie Appy and William Buick, the, the Godolphin team, are going to really turn the form around this week and show what they're made of. And I think Great Truth 5-2, to two, I, I can see that horse winning this race but the one I've got each way is is Sun for the Richard Hannon team Pat jo- Dobbs is already jocked up and I think this horse will take another step forward again from that run at Newbury I was quite impressed by that actually um, and I knew they fought quite a lot of this horse at Ascot when finishing third behind Natural Force and he, yeah I think he's slowly starting to prove how good he might be and I think 12 to 1 might not be the worst each way play in the world in the superlative stakes um, moving on to the race where there's definitely going to be a few prices in this because even though we haven't got all the full declarations for this, we're going to try and pick a few out. And it's the seven furlong Bet365 Bunbury Cup. Uh, it's Heritage Handicap, a class two event. And Croupier is a seven to one favourite. A wow is eight to one. Bless him, Montesib, Streets of Gold, all ten to one. Biggles is twelve to one. Gorak, Star of Orion, Wild Lion, sixteen to one, twenty to one. Bar these. I'm sure there's a couple you may have picked out, Jack. I mean, I quite like the look, um, as a, a few to mention earlier. I like the look of Streets of Gold, who's running for the first time in a handicap since a nursery handicap as a two-year-old. Um, so this is the first time in sort of an open handicap. And I think this horse could be on a fair mark um, of 105, I think, currently. And 10 to 1 might not be the worst price in the world. They might have campaigned this horse absolutely perfectly, Eve Johnson Horton, and got this horse into a, a really nice race. I mean, ran third behind Age of Kings in the Jersey Stakes at Royal Ascot, was only third behind um, Olivia Meralda. That was at Epsom in the, the Scurry Stakes. I think this horse has a, a lot to offer. Might be a. Look, 105 is a fair mark, and to win a race like this as a three year old isn't easy, but. I think they've campaigned this horse really well. So if, if that horse took his chance, 10 to 1 is not the worst price in the world. I'll give a mention to Star of Orion. I was all over this horse last season. You remember that I was all over it for the Golden Mile at Goodwin. I'm probably going to end up having the same sort of campaign with this horse again. But this horse here has been finishing second twice this season in two Class 2 handicaps. One of those was behind Montesib. Um, but I think he can kind of reverse the form now. Drop to a mark of 92. I think this horse has a really good chance. I know they think a hell of a lot of this horse. Ross Ryan dropped up for Rafe Beckett. And the other one that I might not put up for this race, but one that I'll be watching very keenly is Ropey Guest um, for the Margson team. Dara Keenan has dropped up on board 25 to 1. The plan is, from speaking to George's daughter, Rosie, is to go for the Stewards Cup at Goodwood. And I think even though this horse is running over seven, you can get a Stewards Cup that's usually felt like a kind of softly run seven and if it's run at a good pace I think that's going to suit this horse perfectly so almost an anti-post angle into the Stewards Cup but I think Ropey guess that's the plan with this horse and if this horse were to run a good race ran second here last year if this horse ran a good race and you imagine they'll go to the Stewards Cup with a massive chance I think the plan is that they might take a little bit of weight off the horse with a claimer so I'd be excited to see that so I think the two that I'm going to stick with are going to be Streets of Gold and Starve Orion for the race Jack where are you staying? Um, just the one for me, Gorak. Um, I thought he ran a great race in part of 19 pounds after his run at Haydock behind Jumby when he was only rated 86. James McDonald on board, 40 to 1, down the near side, cheap pieces on, ran a great race, won his, the near side. He stayed on in okay fashion, not too much more than that. He's been dropped a pound for that, which I think is almost a tiny bit on the on the tough side to be fair but look i think he's actually got uh, a lot to offer off top weight i mean he kind of 
I get, he got and stuck his neck out, of course, properly at Haydock. Then went there again with Neil Callum back on board in group, in group three company. He was only beaten two lengths that day at a big prize. But he's a very consistent type. He was only beaten a couple of lengths in second at Chester on soft ground, which I kind of think went against him. He was, he, I mean, he was destroyed in the second, really, when he was a odds-on favourite again at Leicester on heavy ground. Didn't like the ground that day whatsoever. I think over this trip, I think he's probably not exactly well handicapped, but he's 16 to 1. Kieran Schumacher takes the ride this time, so it'll be Gorak for me. Okay, Gorak for Jack in the Bunbury Cup. We now move on to the feature race, which is the Pertemps Network July Cup Stakes Group 1 contest, part of the British Champion Series. Um, six furlongs the trip, and Shaquille, the Commonwealth Cup winner, tops the market 15-8. to eight. Azure Blue 3-1, to one. Kinross 6-1, to one. Little Big Bear 6-1, to one. Cardem supplemented for the race 11-1, to one. Lazoo is 16-1, to one. and then 25-1 to one bar these. Jack, after the Commonwealth Cup, um, you mentioned to me, you said you thought Little Big Bear probably ran a really nice trial for the July Cup. Um, obviously, we have got the winner from the Commonwealth Cup in here. What were your thoughts behind having Little Big Bear potentially over Shaquille? Was that just a prize thing or were you just thought that Little Big Bear was slightly unlucky? Um, I don't think he was unlucky. It just looked like he was... Oh, it was a tricky one. It didn't look like he was properly at his best. Um I wouldn't say he was exactly 100% that day, not in terms of fitness-wise, but in terms of what we saw. And Shaquille's clearly a bit of a hot pot, so he could clearly kind of boil over somewhat. Look, we may be overcomplicating this race completely, but I definitely probably would have been taking a little bit better ahead of Shaquille. Maybe not if he was 3-1, to one, which he was backed into. I know he went 7-1 to one straight after the race because we were talking about it, watching it together, saying that's actually probably a little bit overpriced. But, of course, he's got a bruise in his foot, so he may not be going. Should we keep this one simple, Sam? I think we should keep this one a lot more simple than I've kept the rest of them. Um, it, was, it was between one or two for me. Um, Azure Blue, of course, beat Eiffel Princess last time out when she was she was fit, but she was coming back, of course, by half a length as well. Azure Blue looks like she could, like she could be top, top class. I'm not too sure, though, so I'm probably going to stay away from the filly and go back to Kim Ross with William Buick chopped up. Of course, finished seventh at Ascot uh, in the Diamond Jubilee or, or whatever it was called then. Was, of course, third uh, over at Keeneland over a mile. But look, he's a very consistent sprinter, whether it's over six, whether, whether it's over seven as well. But look, he knows where the finishing line is, doesn't he? He knows where the winning post is. He's six to one. He's a back all each way price. This sprinting division is blown open. As you and Blue could be the superstar, but if she isn't, I think Kim Ross is going to be bang there at the finish, hopefully, with you, William Buick on board, of course. Frankie's out for his band, so hopefully Kim Ross can go close. Yeah, Frankie will be head in hands if Kim Ross goes and wins this after wanting to win the July Cup as the final group one on his list. He'll be head in hands if William Buick were to, to win this. I'm sure he'd be delighted, but um, I'm going to do a complete opposite, Jack, and not make this simple. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take a flyer on runs of freedom in here for the Henry Candy team. Dane O'Neill taking the ride. Currently twenty five to one in here. I think this could be a good each way price, especially if a little bit of rain gets into the ground. I mean, you can go back and look at the run at Ascot, and look, it was quick going that day. I'm not sure this horse enjoyed that ground at all. I think this horse prefers a little bit of cut in the ground. I know that he has one on ground like this. He actually beat Vintage Stakes winner Marban. Um, prior to going to Ascot, that was at Salisbury, but I wouldn't say that was the strongest race in the world, and he probably should have been taking that. But start the season can excuse that run, but go to the back end of last season where this horse experienced good soft conditions, actually finished second behind Kinross um, in the champion sprint stakes at Ascot. I think that's really good form, and I can imagine if it did get good soft, we'll see a similar running from this horse. And that run at um, I think it was Salisbury, you've got to remember this horse actually finished ahead of Cardem in that race as well. So actually has form of beating the winner of the um, QE2 Jubilee Stakes winner. So I, I think 25 to 1 might be too big, big a price, especially if it came up on the soft side. I think a few of these horses won't appreciate those conditions, but he certainly will. I think he's a very, very smart horse. I think 25 to 1 might end up to be too big on the day. So 25 to 1, Henry Candy's run to freedom in the July Cup Stakes for me. And Jack will be with Kinross, in the July Cup Stakes on Saturday. And that is it for the races we are going to be covering. Um, before we go, as much as Jack said, it's not going to be easy to find winners. I do want to try and get a best bet out of him. So, Jack, if there was a best bet for you, who's it going to be this week? 
I've realised over the last co- uh, couple of years, Sam, there's um, obviously the backstory to this one. There's um, a common theme with me at big festivals, and that is I'll back something, usually find the value, it'll go and lose, come out and win. And Parotto was the big one for me from Ascot. That hurt, that did. Seeing Parotto win at Sandown, it made it even worse. I was on Uzo. I thought, Parotto, you've actually just betrayed me and made me look like an absolute idiot um, at Ascot. But no, I'm not going to let the same happen with frankness. You know, and the Palace of Hollywood House had no run whatsoever with Harry Davis on board. They've actually handed the ride to Callum Hutchinson instead, which I think is probably a, a touch on the, on the harsh side. I haven't seen if Harry's actually going elsewhere. But Frank was, of course, won pretty cosily at Goodwood, then dropped back to five, stayed on there, when they had no run whatsoever, was checked, Hamburg had to switch right, flew home that day, he was off the mark of 90. Callum takes three off. He's got to, uh, she, sorry, she's got to be well handicapped. Uh, if she isn't, then goodness me, I know nothing about the game. But frankness is eight to one for the bet three six five handicap. It's the three o'clock on Thursday. Three o'clock on Thursday. My best bet is actually going to come on the Thursday as well, and it's not going to come from a race that we've been covering. It actually comes in the four ten, which is the maiden filly stakes over six furlongs, two year old contest, and it's actually a horse called Jamira Breeze um in here who i don't know what price we're going to be getting about this because there's no prices available why are you shaking your head you've we've just we just previewed the july meeting you've put up something in a maiden yeah no why not so jamira breeze i think this would take this would take some beating i think you might actually get a fair price about this but this horse i mentioned earlier about dazzling star this horse was second to dazzling star over the july course um back on the i think it was the back end of june and I was quite impressed by the running of this horse. I thought actually he should have finished a lot closer. Tom McQueely took the ride that day. Jim Crowley is now on board this horse. And I do think this horse take a massive step forward. Took a massive step forward from um, her debut run. Really did um, to finish second behind Dazzling Star. And Dazzling Star I think could be quite a, a smart horse. So I think this could be a fair enough price. I'd like to probably see maybe sort of five to one or bigger about Jamira Breeze. And if that were to come about then I'll certainly be having a bet on this horse. But if I was to have a a, a, a nap from the race we previewed it would come in the um, Duchess of Cambridge stakes. And I just think that Star of Mystery could be a, an absolute certainty and be the bank of the meeting, but it's too short a price. So I'll take Jamira Breeze Thursday, 4.10 in the Maiden Phillies Stakes. And there we go. That is the preview done. Jack's got to get away. He's going to be busy this morning. Jack, what are your plans for the rest of this week then? Um, for this weekend, we're going racing tomorrow and Friday on a Tats um, this afternoon. So that should be good to head over to Tats there uh, for the July sale this evening. I think... Just, just chill out a bit. It's been a busy old couple of weeks. Met some great people, but yeah, I mean, looking forward to going racing Thursday and Friday. Hopefully, we'll find a winner or two. Never actually been to the July course, you know. Um, so it'd be great to go to the July course. I know a lot of people prefer the July course to the Rolling Mile. What about you? Yeah, I'm. Oh, I'm going to try and relax as much as possible. I'm considering actually um, heading off to Ascot on Saturday for um, the summer. I don't know what kind of weather we're going to get on Saturday, but. Um, if it's decent enough weather, I may consider heading there. So we'll have to wait and see. If not, I'll just be relaxing a weekend, which would be uh, quite nice to do for once, uh, kind of building up to, to Goodwood Week. Um, next weekend, we will be back. All attention probably is going to be switching to the Curra. Um, we've got the Irish Oaks next weekend. We've got the International Curra Cup. We've got the Minstrel States. We've got some decent racing, some group contests to cover over in Ireland. So all attention will be switched to there. As always, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It really isn't hard to do. Just hit subscribe. It's free to do so. Um, and come and give us a follow. You won't miss out on a video if you do subscribe. Give the video a like. Comment down below with your naps. And we will see you again next weekend for our weekend preview. Thanks for watching.